God who praise God who is the head of my life. And to the absence of Pastor Young and Mother Young. And to uh, Reverend Lawrence and Reverend Mabry and to all our deacon and deaconesses and mothers and to all of God's children. And it's just a blessing just to be in the house of God one more time.
came and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. So we started with the wise builder who went out and saw a piece of land and made sure that it was a good piece of land and started doing his building. Now as Christians, when we come, when we first get saved, and we tell the Lord, I will accept you as my personal savior, it doesn't just finish at the altar, but it's just the beginning for you to start building a firm foundation. Second Timothy 2 and verse 19 tells us about the foundation. Uh, the firm, um, that God is a firm foundation and that God stand having a seal. The Lord knows who are his and let everyone whose name the name of the Lord depart from unrighteousness. The wise man will not build in the sand he chooses to build where there is a solid root of rock. We all going to build on a foundation in this life. Whether we realize it or not, we are going to build a foundation where we place our soul destiny. And that is our spiritual life. Now we hear the word. The wise builder hears the word of God. And he acted. So when he go up, go about, start building the house, he knows the direction of what he is going to do. The wise man built a foundation that was founded upon a rock, which is the word of God. A house that builds and that does not fall. Psalms 28 and verse 1 said, He is our short rock. We must follow wise instruction to build a firm foundation. Because we, we, if we don't, we might soon find out that the foundation comes crumbling down. So if we have the blueprint of the Word of God, then the foundation that we built will be able to withstand when the storm yes. comes. Yes. And it doesn't have to be heavy rainfall or the wind blow. The storm of life, <laughs> sickness, or wealth, yeah. things that we that depend upon for our living come crumbling down. And therefore, if we are not standing and the word of God, we are going to come down with it. <clears throat> I was listening to Trevon's mom, um, Nancy Grace was talking to her when she first heard about her son and she said she had to leave work and about her son being shot and she asked her, what did you do? What were you thinking at the moment? And we all know that we heard about things that are very shocking to us. How do we respond? And she said that the only thing that she knows because she's a woman of God was to rely on God and for her strength. Now anybody else who doesn't know who really Jesus is probably would have acted in a different manner. But you see, she shows how we all as Christians should act when we have things that happen to us. That we, if we know when we hear the word of God. We don't wait till we're falling in crisis to start building a foundation. There is no time. I don't know of anybody building a foundation and their house in the middle of a hurricane. You cannot put cement, mix a cement together in the middle of heavy rainfall. And so for us as Christians, that the word of God should always be abiding in our heart. So wherever we go, wherever we are, when we come up in things that are uncertain, they just hit us, that we know how to react in a proper manner. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Because people around us are seeing our lifestyle. And so 
when storms come upon us, they are expecting us because they know that we are Christian yes. to act in a manner where we should rely on yes. God. Yes. Yes. And therefore, if we're not acting in that direction, they are going to question our faith in God. And so, the wise builder thought that it was necessary he hear the word of God. And not just hear the word of God, but he also put it in practice. Many times, we come to church on Sunday morning, we hear the word of God, but on Monday morning we forgot what the word said. Because we're so easily distracted on Monday morning, the priority sometimes for us is not to take time with for God. The priority or priority is to get to work at time or to go somewhere else, but we are so easily distracted. And that's not how we should live as Christians. We should make sure that our whole mind and our soul and our body is for God. Yes. We should always put him at the four utmost of our life, in our everyday life, because you never know when things will creep upon you, yes. and if you don't yes. have the Word of God in you, you would not know how to react. Yes. So the wise builder makes sure that he has all the necessary information, correct instruction to build and the house, to build his house. And so when the storms of life come, yes. he was able Romans 10 and verse 17 tells us so that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. No one can know how to build a firm foundation unless one hears and studies the blueprint. So we can play around as much as we want to. We can shout as much as we want to. But when the test of time comes for us to show the world, to show the devil, that even though I am going through this thing, but you have no place in my mind, yeah. you have no yeah. place in my thinking, yeah. because I am a child of God. Right. Yeah. That's the way that we should react when we are facing our star. Be doer of the word, not just hear. Jesus said, Whosoever hear it be, saying of mine, and do it then. James 1, 22 and 24. Encourage to be doer of the word. For if any man hear it, and not a door is like unto behold his face in the glass, and after looking at himself, goes away and immediately forgot what he looks like. You see, we can play around, we can profess that we are a Christian, but you see, the, the Bible is a mirror. So we can say that we are sanctified and holy, but then when we read the Word of God, it tells us something different. And that's why we as Christians at all times don't be like the, uh, the, 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 the false prophet or false teacher. We must always be about God's business. Make sure it is the word of God. Yeah. Don't give people the impression that you're a child of God. But then when things come upon you, it's a different story. And then our action, the way we act, does not represent God. <clears throat> and so when we hear the word of God, it pierces us. Yeah. Because it shows us that the life that we're living does not reflect the Word of God. Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 40, give us a picture of all the blessing that comes in thee, and thou shalt dil diligently hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to all do his commandments. We must be faithful in the Word of God. Yeah. Yeah, right. Philip Paul, who gave of himself in spite of what he went through, but he knows that he was on a mission, not for himself, but for the word of God. And if we look at these faithful men in the Bible,
survival. That yes, they're going to do other things for themselves, but when we make a commitment to serve God, yeah. we don't yeah. just make the commitment when we come to church on Sunday morning. It is something that our lives should reflect on our daily lives. Second Timothy 2 and verse 4, no one serving as a soldier entangles himself with the affairs of his life, that he may please the one who enlists him. We must not get caught up in the things of this world. That is distraction. And that's what we do at times. We forget about the word of God. We say we because I included myself. And so we're easily, easily, easily being distracted when we should focus on the word of God. Building an Iraq. Deuteronomy 32 and verse 4 said he is the rock. His rock are perfect and all his ways are just. A faithful man who just, who does no wrong, upright and just is he. That is the word of God. Ephesians 6 and verse 14 says, Stand therefore, having your minds girt about the truth. The one who built her, us as Christians, Jesus was talking about the word of God, yeah. that our foundation yeah. should be about the word of God yeah. and how we live our life as Christian will determine when we face the challenge that will come. Because we know that if our house is built on a firm foundation, when the storm comes, we can wither the yeah. storm. Why? Because we have put on the armor of God, the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, that it doesn't matter what storm that comes our way, we can stand the test of time. And if there's ever a time that we as Christians need to put on the armor of God, it is now in our present. There's so many things that are happening around us, and if we don't look sharp, we get caught up in them, and then we forgot who is our main source. Because we all want to be win the argument. We don't want to win soul for God. We want to win the argument. We want to have the best talk. The foolish builder who sought to build his house in the sand. Yes, the sand is nice, it's white, it's beautiful. And oh, it's just a nice place to just go and, you know, just have some fun. But he had the equal opportunity, just like the wise builder. But he chooses to build on the sand. We can say, Lord, I will commit my life to you. And then after we say that, we say, Lord, I am going to use my own intellect to build my own foundation. I think I, think I can do this. Yes, the pastor might preach. Yes, I get the word. But I think I can add something onto it just to let me feel good. You see, back in the day, the scribes and the Pharisees that they were listening to Jesus, you know, they have their own culture, their laws that they put into place. That's why Jesus was teaching these people about their lifestyle that it has to change. For us as Christians, the fruits that come forth determine how we are hearing the word of God. It's not about the past, it's about us. We make the commitment. And so therefore, if the fruit that we're bringing forth is not good, then we need to question ourselves. We can't question anybody at the judgment. We can sing hallelujah and call down, call down in God right now so everybody can think that you are so holy. But at the day of the judgment, God said, I know you not. Right. It's like we're doing lip service. We're showing everybody that, you know, I can sing better than you. I can praise better than you. 
I can pray better than you. But then, they will be standing right there in the herd. And Jesus said, I know you're not. So let's not kid ourselves as Christians. If we are a Christian, let's just be real. Because at the final analysis, we will be judged. And we can't blame nobody else. So if our foundation is not on the word of God now, let us start now. Remember, if the foundation is crap, you have to call the contractor to come and fix it. You can't do it yourself. If the pools and the house is rubble, you got to get somebody to come and fix it. So while we are here, while we have the opportunity as Christians, let us build the foundation of the word of God. Not just for our convenience, not just sometime, but all the time. Because God is depending on us. Yeah. We know that if you're at school and you get a test and you didn't hear anything what the teacher said, you, the outcome of the grade on your test determines how much you hear what the teacher said. You see, that is what we are going to face on the judgment day. How did we hear the word of God and how did we act upon it and how did we put it into practice? And so the foolish builder <coughs> decided to go build his house in the sand. Luke 8 and verse 12, some here, but the devil takes away, take the word away. We act and we keep the devil away. How we act on the word of God, we can keep the devil away. We can stand for even when the devil tried to get us. Stand up and the word of God. And so he was enticed by what's out there in the world. And so when he was building his house, he thought, he thought nothing of it. He didn't thought that building it would, came, would come crumbling down during a storm. You know, he was just living the lifestyle, and most of us do that. Whether we had a fancy car, a fancy house, and materialists, we just get caught up in the moment. You know, yes, we come to church. Yes, we clap our hands. Yes, we do all the necessary things. But in our heart, in our heart, the word of God was not there. And so as we continue to live our lifestyle, you see all of a sudden a storm come up on us. And because there was nothing in there, there was nothing, there's nothing in there. We we're only showing it that we have something on us. And so all of a sudden, when the storm comes, you ever see the wave when it comes and, and, the, and the shore, it takes everything with it right, right back in the water. And it takes everything that's in the water at times and it brings it on the shore. And so when the storm raging, you know, the foolish man who built his house did not have a steady foundation. And so when the crisis come, he was easily to crumble right. because there was nothing there. And so what happened is you're giving the impression to everybody around you who thought that you have something going on. Like, I saw you go to church every Sunday morning. I saw you all dressed up. I saw you all take part right. in the church. I saw you all praising God. Oh, church, you must be over. You were just praising God. You were just keeping up everybody's time. What happened? Right. Just a test. As I now face, when we give people the impression that we are a child of God, that we have something going on, we have the Holy Spirit in us all running over. But when the challenge comes, we were able to stand up. And we are going to face that at the judgment if we are not building our salvation and the Word of God. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 4 said, keep it in memory, use it or lose it. James 1 and verse 22 said, do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourself. Do what it says. You see, the foolish man may not look, look for an easy way out. It seems to be an easy way out by building his house in the sand. Sometimes we always, as Christians, look for the easy way out. We don't like the hard road because the hard road just seems too much work. Yes, sometimes as Christians, yes, we can fall by the wayside. 
but it's for us to know and to get up and keep on going. Keep on going. That's what we should do as Christians. We should sacrifice ourselves unto God. Make sure that our foundation is a sure one. We can see ourselves as Christians in one of these buildings, whether the wise one or the foolish one. We can make that determination. We will build an affirm or weak foundation at one time or another in our Christian work with God. A firm foundation can only be had when we follow the instruction given by Jesus who is the chief in cornerstone. We can ask ourselves this question. What kind of foundation are we building? First John 1 verse 7 tells us, but we walk in the light as he is in the light. We have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 58 says, Therefore, my beloved brothers, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the word of the Lord, knowing your labor is not in vain. God bless you. Amen.